Hello, South Africa, and welcome to the 7th European Film Festival, the online edition in 2020. The European Film Festival is a partnership project of the European delegation to South Africa, European Union delegation to South Africa, and 12 European embassies and cultural agencies. Please visit the festival's website on www.eurofilmfest.co.za for details about other films and special activities that are taking place at the festival. Please also follow us on social media. Um, today we are um, sharing with you a Q&A question and answer session with uh, the directors of The Eighth, a documentary uh, screening in the festival. Uh, with me today is Lucy Kennedy, who is a journalist and documentary filmmaker. She's directed documentaries for Netflix, Al Jazeera, National Geographic, PBS, WNET, and RTE. Uh, she's also a graduate of the Columbia Graduate School of Journalism. Also with us is Maeve Boyle, who is an Emmy Award winning editor and producer, and she's worked on films for HBO, PBS, uh, BBC, and won numerous awards for all of these. They also worked on this film with Aideen King, so three women directors who directed this film, produced by Alan Maher. So um, hello, Lucy and Maeve, and welcome. Hi. Hi. Thank you. All right, great to have you here. So great film that you've made, The Eighth, which uh, covers um, the fight, the successful fight to have uh, a law which prohibited termination of pregnancy in Ireland repealed. This law was called the Eighth Amendment. Um, so it's uh, not very usual uh, to have uh, three people collaborating as directors on a project. So that was the first thing that struck me. So I was really looking forward to meet you guys and find out how did you come to be in this collaboration? How did you establish it? How did you organize how you work? Division of labor, also div division of decision making, etc. Tell me how you came to co collaborate on this film. Well, thanks, Tiny, for having us, firstly. Um, and also, thank you to the European Film Festival for screening the eighth. We're very excited that it's screening and we're very excited to hear what people think of the film and their reactions. Um, to kick off, so um, Lucy, Aideen and I came together back in 2016. Um, Lucy and Aideen were in New York. I was in Dublin, but we'd all lived in New York for long periods of time. Um, we just felt the three of us came at this. Um, we were all Irish women. We had all lived under the shadow of the eight and grown up in Ireland um, in this context. But we all, I suppose, um, you know, and so we were interested and felt it a kind of an incentive to tell that story. But on top of that, I suppose the three of us also had different skills that we thought we could bring to the table. Adrian's a great producer, Lucy, a great journalist, I'm a narrative storyteller editor. So we felt that the, you know, those three skills combined and also given the fact that we'd all grown up in Ireland and experienced this issue firsthand, it would be a good um, collaboration and a, a very, very important story for us to tell. Um, so that was um, the beginning. Um, we began researching it over a couple of years, met many different people. And in terms of the collaboration, in terms of how we approached this, I was actually living in Ireland, Lucy and Aidan in New York. Um, but one of the things that we did was in order to try and collaborate and openly and freely and kind of allow each other to kind of bring our skills to the table, I suppose we, we, we created a kind of a, almost like a voting system in terms of like trying to make decisions. So there was three of us. Um, we, we basically came to the conclusion that if we, if, you know, two of us felt we should do something that we would go with it. Now, it never really came to that, honestly. We generally kind of came together and we generally kind of agreed. But like that was the one way that we tried to make, uh, you know, uh, democratic decisions, I guess, as a team of three. So that was one of the things um, that we did. And then in terms of the storytelling and how we approached the film and the story, I suppose, um, you know, what, one thing that was important was that we were three um, female filmmakers making a story about Irish, you know, women's reproductive rights. It felt important that it was a, a women's story and that we were, you know, female directors coming together as a collaboration. But also, I suppose, in terms of the, the crew and the team, the creatives that were involved who were absolutely indispensable, we, we did really, of course, there were some very important guys involved as well, but mainly we, we love to have female filmmakers, female camera people involved. We also 
had um, a, a wonderful female composer and it was lovely just to have a lot of these women coming together to kind of also get the film over the line creatively as well. So that was another part of the incentive of making it together in that, in that way. Fantastic. Um, storytelling by women is uh, something that we in the industry have fought very uh, much and our foremothers before us to have more of in, um, in, in, as a way to have women represented in the filmic canon. What did it mean for you guys to be collaborating as a mostly women team on a story like this, Lucy? Um. You know, there's so much in, in what you just said because it's you even actually see it reflected in the film itself because as Maeve said, we grew up under the shadow of the eighth. Maeve and I and Aideen, we grew up in a very patriarchal Irish society, very sort of... Um, you know, there was a lot of kind of collaboration between church and state and a lot of suppression of women's voices. So, you know, and particularly women in crisis pregnancy, I mean, they're very often sent away and, and basically locked up and separated from their children. So coming together to tell this story as filmmakers and was so important because as as people see in the film, a lot of what the film is about is about breaking silence. And really, you know, as Alva points out, it's opening Pandora's box. And I think the the journey of the of Irish women from silence into, you know, having their voices heard is is actually a similar journey that women filmmakers have as well. Um, so, so it was really central to us. And I think women, as women filmmakers, we have to continue to, um, you know, work to have our voices heard and help other women have their voices heard too. And one thing I will say um, that I find interesting about women working together as filmmakers, you know, very often and before I, I ever made a film, I always had this notion of the director as auteur and, you know, that it was this one genius. And, and I realized working with, you know, I realized from getting into the industry just how much everybody is essential to filmmaking and I and I think women are more open to sort of recognizing that and bringing that to the fore as well. That's and really I, interesting. I, I would just add in as well like one thing that was really served really well for the three of us was we split up um, our, our tasks like we were able to say can you go and follow um, Alba today I'm going to go and do Andrea we're going to I'm going to go to the airport and have the women coming in we, we were able and we were able to collaborate really 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 well where we, we, we trusted each other to basically collectively tell the story you know in a really organic way and so I thought it was it worked really well as a team of three in that in that regard. I find that really fascinating because I think the, the kind of filmmaking process that we've inherited is one that's very like military-like in terms of its style and very hierarchical and so at the center of it patriarchal. You know, um, do you think that, that this kind of practice, opportunities to collaborate in new ways with people who bring a different sensibility is also changing the way we're making films slowly, somehow? I mean, I, I, I do. I, I think that there's an opportunity to be, you know, film, filmmaking has always been a collective kind of medium in the sense that you always have a, many, many people who bring a film, you know, who put a film together from the pre to the production to the post. But absolutely, I think that, I think it can only lend itself if it's a simpatico team, if it works well together and your, your sensibilities align. And I think going in, it has to be very much definitively, you know, we, we think we're going to be able to do this together and we have a, a very similar vision. In this case, I felt like the three of us really did. And so, yes, I think that it's really, I just, I can only see it as a benefit, actually, uh, and enhancing the story and bringing more layers to it because we have more opinions with the same kind of shared sensibility. And, and you, really Lucy, what are you taking into your future film projects about how to make film that you learned from this, this way that you were describing making this film? 
You know, it's it's really interesting because I feel like in in my work, I, I always work very collaboratively. Like that's how I like to work. And and just in a way, almost to jump back on what Maeve was saying, you know, it always has been a collaborative practice. It's just that people haven't gotten the recognition. You know, like every single person in the process, it's, it's just essential from the person who does the graphics to the composer to... So I suppose, I, I honestly just feel like more to kind of confidently embrace that level of collaboration is, is how I, I would think about it. Super. So just to change the topic a little bit, for those who are starting with the bonus material before they get to the film, I just want to share an excerpt. Um, the Eighth Amendment uh, is, is the title speaks to a law which was um, inserted into the Irish Constitution by referendum in 1983. Um, and so Article uh, 40.3.3 of this law uh, reads as follows. It says, the state acknowledges the right to life of the unborn and with due regard to the equal right to life of the mother, guarantees in its laws to respect and as far as, pract as practicable, practicable by its laws to defend and vindicate that right. So, um, and, and a lot of things come into question when you kind of unpack this, this little uh, piece of text, uh, you know, about defining when life begins, which, are complete, which is a completely separate, like, conversation. But also, more than anything, defining human rights as women's rights and the place of women in Irish society. Um, and also, just like, uh, what are the things that um, are being fought for um, as, you know, on the one hand, the responsibility that women have in society, and on the other hand, um, the, the, the kind of um, the duty that uh, women have to take care of themselves and their own right and their own, like, agency. So I was really interested, after making this film, what you feel is the place of um, women in Irish society after the events of the repealing of this law, and why does it matter to the rest of the world? So I, I think that's there, there's a lot in what you just said, and I think it's it's uh, you raise a lot of very interesting issues. And 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 I'll start just talking with Ireland for a second because when when you go back to 1983, abortion was already illegal in Ireland. So it was a question of the sort of powers that be wanting to copper fasten this law to make sure that never would there be any chance of abortion unless there was a constitutional referendum. So I think partly what happened, I mean, Ireland has changed so much since 1983. There have been these you know, scandals that have happened throughout the world in the Catholic Church. Um, and, and that has sort of, and Ireland also has become a more affluent society. So there's lots of reasons why Ireland has become more skeptical of the church. But in terms of a, a, an Ireland of today and what this means going forward, I think that there's a generation younger than Maeve, Aideen and myself who just woke up and, and realized, hold on a second, we've got this law here. They were a much more confident generation and um, they weren't prepared to accept it. And I think that we have this situation in Ireland at the moment where there's talk of sealing archives. I won't get into the sort of technicalities of it, but uh, of, of how women were treated in these mother and baby homes. There, is an enormous uproar from Irish people and, and Irish women. And I actually think Irish women are not prepared to accept the status quo. So I, I see this as having opened the floodgates of, of work that had been done over 35 years on the shoulders of many, many activists for years. And then in terms of where this film can sort of on a more global perspective, I think it's an inspiring story. I really do, because the 1983 of Ireland and the 1983 that Alva, our central character, was fighting in, it was a dark, bleak place with where it didn't seem like there was any hope. And yet they kept fighting, and yet they kept fighting, and kicked back, and these horrendous cases, and kicked back. 
and eventually we got there, you know? So, uh, you know, even, I, I do feel like even though when it seems like there's no hope, um, there is hope. And I mean, um, that's something you guys know in South Africa more than anywhere else in the world. Um, so Maeve, I don't know if you've anything to add to that or? I just think, I, I, I just really hope that the film exactly is a, is a source of inspiration for other activist movements around the world and for, for women who are fighting for their rights, whether that's reproductive rights or other kinds of rights. I just think what was really exciting about this movement, having uh, you know doc documented it, but also living through it, was it was incredibly collective. Everybody came and they met and they decided to go for this one thing. They needed to repeal the eighth. You know what I mean? And they decided on that and they and it was a very laser focused push by thousands and thousands of, of brilliant women. So, you know, I think it was inspiring for us, for us to film it, but it was also, I hope that it's an inspiring message for women across the globe. Absolutely. And actually, that's just one final thing on, on what Maeve says. That's actually a really good point in terms of sort of activism, uh, you know, around the world and activist movements. The laser focus of this movement, there was a target. People had to come together. Activists who would have different uh, opinions on the question of abortion, um, but they focused on this one thing and came together, had a clear message and pushed. Super. Um, I, I, I cannot tell you how much your film has been inspirational, both as a woman and as a filmmaker. Uh, it, was, it was really great to watch it and I, I, I take my hat off to all three of you for such a wonderful accomplishment. Is there anything else that you, if this was happening at a theater at the Labia or in Rosebank in Johannesburg, anything else that you would like to kind of leave the audience with after watching this film? Or, or to, yeah, yeah, anything else you'd like to kind of, final thoughts? You know, what, what I really would love actually is to hear from the audience and more than anything else. And that is the bittersweet thing about the moment that we're in. You know, it's just thrilling to be part of the festival, but you know, the, the personal interaction isn't there at the moment. I agree with Lucy that that's one of the hard parts about the virtual um, experience. That said, social media has been nice and that people have reached out and said and they've reacted. But, I, I, you know, so we would love to hear from the audience and absolutely love to, for people to share their thoughts on the film. It would be inspirational for us in that regard, I think. That's such a good point. We really would. And we check all our social media so it will get to us. And we would really love to hear from you. Thank you so much, Lucy and Maeve. That was Lucy Kennedy and Maeve O'Boyle talking about their film, The Eighth, uh, a collaboration between the two of them and Aideen Kane. This film is part of the European Film Festival. The, Eighth, uh, the European Film Festival is a partnership project of the European Union delegation to South Africa and 12 European embassies and cultural agencies. The festival opens on the 22nd of November and uh, you should visit the website uh, www.eurofilmfest.co.za for details about other films and special activities that are taking place at the festival. Uh, please also follow the festival and social media. Um, that is uh, bonus material we've just been making for you for the the documentary film The Eighth, which you can catch at the European Film Festival.